Hey guys, gals, folks, friends, fam, uh, just uh, Dallas here. Just wanted to do a, I think when I first started this channel out, I did a lesson on open chords for beginners. And I want to make a new video and uh, a new video for open chords and put some tabs up for it on the screen while my, the video plays to help you guys out with it. Now that I'm kind of at a little different place with it than I was a couple years ago when I started out. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's just kind of dive right into it here. So, um, I wanted to do this as a, uh, open chords for beginners. So, um, I recently, you know, I hadn't, hadn't really been doing private lessons the last couple few years here. And I, I recently took on a couple new students. So, um, you know, both are, which at, are at a very beginner, they're young, haven't picked it up ever level. So I want to, it kind of made me think about how I've been really focusing this channel more on intermediate and people that kind of already play and I want to do some big very beginner videos too so um, let's just dive right into it this is gonna be your open chords so if you were very you know first thing picking up the instrument don't know really anything this is gonna be kind of one of the first things you want to learn because this is gonna give you a handful of chords to not just be able to play along and like you, you know you'll be able to hear them in songs and play to certain songs that only have a couple chords which is hundreds thousands of songs um but also you can then once you know a couple more than two or three chords you can then start to put them together and go back and forth between them which is really the most important part of learning these chords i mean obviously you have to learn where to put your fingers but the the what's harder than that what you're what you'll eventually struggle with at first a little more than that is going to be moving from them from one chord to the other so we're going to do other videos on how to work on that how to practice that but for right now let's just show you these chords so that you have these in your arsenal of things you know here and then um just kind of go from there and we'll go through then go you know do more videos with how you're going to use these chords so let's start with your E minor chord, okay? It's gonna set, that's how it's gonna sound. Okay, and you're gonna, we're gonna do all these starting on your lowest in pitch string, which is, if you're looking down at your guitar, you're, you're the first string closest to you. Right? So we're gonna, we're gonna say them all in this way where I'm gonna go down, which means it's gonna get higher in pitch, right? But we're going to start on our low E. So that's going to be zero. That's going to be open. Zero is always just going to mean you don't fret anything, okay? And then you're going to play two on both your next two strings, which are your A string and your D string. You're going to play two, the second fret. Okay, now with this, and then the rest are all going to be open, okay, on this chord. So now the important part with that is for this particular chord, and I probably won't gripe on this for many chords, but for this one, I would like you to use these two middle fingers at first. That way, in a minute here when we do the E major, you have your first digit available to you, okay? So, there's your E minor that you just learned. Now go ahead and put your first finger that's free, go ahead and put that down on the first fret, down on the fourth string. Now that's going to give you your E major chord okay now what's important about all these chords is that you can hear every single note ring out and if you hear hear that you don't want to hear that you want to hear not nah. <laughs> so okay you get the point you got to shape your fingers so that they all sound nice and clear and pretty right Okay, so that's your E minor and your E major. Now let's do your D major and D minor. So D major, you're going to take the, your first two fingers, okay? And you're going to put them on the second fret, on the sixth string, on your highest string, and on your, on your fourth string. That's your G string. So you're going to skip a string there, okay? And those are both on your second fret. On the third fret, you're going to play that middle string. Your, that's your your fifth string down, right? You're gonna play that on your third fret. And play the four 
strings that are the highest in pitch. Your four lowest in direction, highest in sound. That's why this gets confusing to articulate to you. I, I always struggle with that with beginners is because as you go down in direction, you go up in pitch, right? So, okay. Um, so I'll try to, I guess what I'm getting at is I will try to let you know what I'm referring to. So now for your D minor chord, it's gonna be real similar, but we're gonna kind of have to switch these two fingers around. So you still have three on your G string, which is your third string, your third, and then your second string, you still have the third fret, but now you're gonna back up on your on your on your high E string. Now you're gonna back up to the first fret here, and that's gonna give you your your D minor chord. Same thing. You're gonna play the four highest in pitch strings there. Okay, so that's your D major and your D minor chord. Now let's play your G major chord, which you can play this way. I learned it this way, so let's play it this way. And then there's lots of variations on a G major. So that's gonna be three on your low E on your first string, two on your next string on your A string, then you're gonna have open on your next two strings. You gotta make sure you can hear those two notes. Then you're gonna have three, the third fret, on both the two highest strings here. You gotta make sure that whole thing rings out. Remember to try to pick each note in the pattern, so or in the chord. So that way, if you do have a dead note, you know where it is and you can spot it. Because if you're strumming it and you just hear, you don't really know necessarily where that's coming from. But if you go. There it is. It's that it's that string, right? So you know you can spot if you go through it note by note, you can spot where you're having trouble and where you might have to adjust how you're uh, forming your left hand. Okay, so that's your G major. Now let's play our C major. Okay, so now you're gonna you're not gonna play anything on your low E string on your first string. On your second string, you're gonna play the third fret. On your next string, you're gonna play the second fret. Then you're gonna have an open note on your on your fourth string. Your fifth string, you're gonna be on the first fret. And then you're gonna have another open note on your sixth string. And with this one, you don't play your lowest string, your E string, you just play these five. So now let's play your A major. Okay, and then for this application, we're gonna use all three fingers because then we can play that last note, which is open. Okay, so you're gonna take all three of your fingers and you're gonna crush them all into this third, or I'm sorry, into the second fret here. And you're gonna be putting those on your, you're gonna skip your first two strings. You're not even gonna play your your first one. The second one you're gonna play, but you're gonna play it open without a fretted note. And then the rest of those notes are all crammed in there on the second fret. And then your highest string you're playing open, nothing. Now you can just take your first pointer finger and play a bar like that and just not play the highest string. And that's how I play my A major 90% of the time, okay? I don't usually need that high E. Unless I'm really going for a sound that where I want that in there. Um, more on that later. For now, you probably just want to do your A major that way, okay? Now, your A minor is all the same notes except on your second highest string, your B string. It's down one note from two to one. So now you take your first finger on that B string, that's your second string here for coming up from the bottom. Second string, <coughs> first fret. <clears throat> and then you're gonna flip these two fingers around, right? So in other words, you're not gonna do it this way. That would be, you wanna flip them around that way. So you wanna play your 
middle finger on your third string going down on the second fret and your third finger on the four on the fourth string second fret so like intuitively you might want to flip those like this but try to flip flop your two fingers the second and third finger try to flip flop <coughs> flop those like this because later on we're going to be doing a lot of this type of stuff okay so it's going to be kind of important that you're able to take that it's a shape that your hands are going to be making for other things so <clears throat> um, I mean, because you, could, of course, can play it this way. That doesn't sound any different than that, right? Do you hear a difference? I don't. <laughs> so <clears throat> you can play it that way, but I think for, uh, for future reasons, for reasons that are unbeknownst to you as of now, you should flip your <clears throat> these two fingers when playing that chord. Um, so, okay, that covers A, A minor, A major, G major, C major, D major, D minor, E major, and E minor. Um, so that should give you a handful of open chords. And, you know, I didn't even say this at the beginning of the video, which I should have. The reason they're called open chords is because they incorporate open strings, right? This E minor is also available in lots of other places. Right, there's that, those notes exist elsewhere, but we're calling these open chords because they're up here in your first few frets and do incorporate open notes. So therefore we can't play every single chord up in this position because of that, because we obviously have flat and sharp and different you know uh different reasons why that is and we'll get into all that for beginners we'll get into all that down the road too so for now just maybe just work on those chords once you know one or two of them three of them four of them all of them start working on going back and forth choose any two take your c four times and then go to your d four times and just go back and excuse me just go back and forth now what's important is the time of this so what you don't here's what you don't want to do you don't want to fumble around with the timing when you're learning it so if you're doing that then you need to slow it down a little bit so you want to keep everything in time at all times so if you're playing that and you and you find that you can't switch fast enough just give yourself more time to switch by slowing it down so it might feel lazy to you while you're playing it but when you get to the chord change it gives you more time so like this like So on and so forth right you don't want to have to right you don't if you're if you have to think stop and think then just slow it down a little bit because you always want to play everything in time in fact timing is much more important than notes and you're going to learn that later on so cool um i've probably probably already made this longer than i intended so i really just wanted to give a uh, redo here on open chords for very beginning students who really don't know much else as of right now and you just need to learn a few of what we call cowboy chords to get you going and we call them cowboy chords not because they're used in cowboy music but because every good cowboy needs to know these chords or cowgirl whoever you are so cool um hope you enjoyed guys um like subscribe share if you'd be so kind i'd really appreciate it um and uh keep on picking and if you have any questions let me know love y'all later